um, welcome to our Access to Higher Education virtual information uh, session. So we usually do, do these at the college, but um, unfortunately we can't. So this is our virtual live one. So welcome to you all. So first of all, I just want to introduce you to the Access team uh, at, at Eastbourne campus. So um, myself, my name is Pamela Hinton and I am an Access to HE lecturer and the course leader. Uh, Heather Collins is the Access to HE Science Lecturer and she also coordinates the Science Pathways at Eastbourne. Uh, and we have Dr. Tony Murphy, who is uh, Access to HE Lecturer in Science. And then we have Katie Watson, who is Access to HE Lecturer in um, Teacher Education, but she also teaches um, across some of the other pathways as well. Okay, so that's the team at Eastbourne. Um, and as I said on the slide, slide, we are all highly qualified and very experienced in teaching access students and very passionate about um, helping access students to progress. So, what do we offer at Eastbourne then? We offer six pathways um, and each pathway is designed for progression into particular degree uh, specific areas. So, we have nursing and healthcare professions. Um, and I'm just going to list the pathways and then I will go into a little bit more detail about them towards the end of the presentation. Uh, we have nursing and healthcare professions, medical sciences, combined sciences, teacher education, social science and humanities and business studies combined with law. The access course is very different in terms of um, the, the, the standard sort of A-level type qualification. Um, and I think that's a good place to start in, in looking at how access is, is structured and what it's about. So access is a 33 week intensive qualification. So it's one academic year um, and it's very intensive because there's a lot squeezed into that year. Um, on access, on the access course, we assess students as they go through the year. So it's a modular course um, and the modules uh, happen throughout the year and then as modules finish um, there is an assessment and then students receive their grades for that particular module so you're assessed throughout the year rather than a big exam at the end of the year. Um, on access to higher education we focus very specifically on the skills that are so important for not only for doing well on the access course but also for progressing onto university. So um, one of the, the main pieces of feedback that we get from our students who've progressed onto university is that they've been able to go there very well prepared because of all of the skills that they've gained on the access course. So the access course is structured, as I said, it's a modular course. Um, and each path, every pathway does um, what we call core modules. Now, these modules are designed to help you develop the really important skills that I've just mentioned in terms of um, supporting your work for the subject modules, but also um, for what you will need for progression onto university. So the core modules that every pathway does are uh, communication and presentation skills, um, study skills, and this includes things like essay writing, referencing, academic research. Um, and, you know, general uh, guidance about how to plan your time, manage your time, um, along with sub, um, module specific guidance that will be helpful to your, your um, work for your other modules. So, oh, excuse me. Access timetables are designed to suit the need of adult learners. So a lot of access students have children. Uh, many of them have jobs as well. And we are aware that obviously that, that it's important to have a timetable that will enable students to uh, manage their external commitments as well. So for that reason, our typical day starts at 9.30. So that leaves time for the school run in the morning. And then we finish lessons at 3 p.m., um, leaving time for the school run at the end of the day. Uh, contact days for all pathways are maximum of three days per week um, and again this leaves some time um, for the independent study that needs to be completed and the assignments that need to be completed <coughs> excuse me outside of college okay at Eastbourne access to HE students from benefit from um, the following so we have very very strong uh, 
partnerships with local universities. So the access course was developed in line with local universities um, so that we can provide a best fit. So we can be sure that what we are uh, teaching you and what we, the skills we are helping you to develop on access are relevant to what you will be asked to do at university. Um, I'm very happy to say that we have an excellent reputation with, um, especially with the external moderators and the awarding body. So our awarding body is laser um, and essentially um, we have to make sure and what my job is to make sure that we are running the course in line with laser procedures and regulations. And they send in external moderators um, at certain points during the year to, to check that. Um, and we're very proud to say that we always get a glowing report and they're always very impressed with what we do. We also offer high levels of individual support. So every pathway has um, a pathway tutor and they will see that tutor um, for regular tutorials. And at certain points, they will break down into individual tutorials where students will have the chance to discuss their progress, um, maybe discuss any concerns and maybe um, access any support that they need. Um, and as I said, we have a variety of pathways which lead to lots of different destinations. So why study with us? Well, uh, we're fantastic. We have a fantastic reputation. Um, a lot of our uh, previous students um, recommend us in terms of what they've um, gained and what they've been able to go on and do. Um, we are absolutely all about helping you to develop the skills that you need to do really well at university. Um, we have study resources, computer uh, rooms, libraries, coffee shops, which are really important when you are a student. Um, we also have a learning support de department to help people with um, additional learning needs. Um, and we have a, a wellbeing department as well to support students with um, other uh, issues that, that they might have. So ideally entry requirements for access are maths and English GCSE at grade C or four as it is now or above. Okay. Um, for teacher education pathway GCSE science at grade C or four would be important as well because it is a requirement. Now um, it doesn't mean that if you haven't got these qualifications that we won't accept you. We will consider applicants on a case by case basis. Okay. And the college does offer GCSEs in maths, English and science. So it would be possible maybe to do one of those alongside access. Um, most universities for most courses, they will want maths and English grade C or above as well as your access diploma and access diploma for an entry requirement into their um, courses. So that is why ideally we would like those to be in place before um, students start the access course, but it doesn't mean we won't accept you. So work experience. Okay, so this is, this is an important one um, and it depends on what pathway you want to go on to. So for Nursing and healthcare professions and teacher education pathway, they both contain a module which require uh, students to write an assignment at, which is based partly on um, practical experience in a workplace. So um, it, it is certainly advisable that this um, work experience is at least started before the course starts or is at least arranged before the course starts. For medical science students who want to progress on to degrees like physiotherapy or paramedic science degrees, it is highly likely that the universities will require well, relevant work experience. And again, we would advise um, students to check this before, before they start access. Um, combined scientists who wish to do uh, veterinary medicine or science, or veterinary science, uh, you will be required to have relevant work experience and it must be probably more than two weeks, so not just sort of a day or a few hours. So what you need to consider in terms of uh, thinking about your pathway, um, what your entry requirements are for your chosen university and degree, whether or not work experience is required, and whether or not they accept applicants from the pathway that you are interested in. 
So where do our students go to? What can you do? Well, you can do lots and this list is absolutely not exhaustive, but this is a range of degree courses that our previous students have gone on to do. What is student life like? Well, um, it's fun, it's hard work, um, but it's, it's great. So we have lots of resources at Eastbourne campus. So we have books, sports facilities, we have a gym, digital resources, we have careers advice and support. Uh, as I said before, we have a wellbeing team um, and they have sort of themed events throughout the year um, to pro promote awareness of different causes. So the campus is quite busy. Um, we also have sports academies, men's and women's, which do things like netball and other sports. So lots to do at Eastbourne campus to keep yourself involved and engaged and to keep yourself busy. So sticky uh, subject about finance. Um, Access students are no longer funded by the government and they haven't been for a very long time. So um, it is required that they are able to self fund. However, um, it is possible to get a loan to secure to um, pay for your course costs if you are not able to pay those yourself. Um, and these are provided by a student loan company. Um, if you take out a student loan to to do the access course, you only need to start paying it back when you are earning over £25,000 per year. Okay, And as a little sweetener, if you go on to complete, successfully complete your degree course, your access to HE loan is written off by the government. Okay, So there's a bit of incentive there. Um, if you fall into the category of 90 to 23 year olds and you do not already have a level three qualification, um, you may be a able to get a fee waiver for the access course. So that will be assessed if you apply um, via a, a fee assessment. So what are our plans for September? Well, um, obviously none of us really know exactly what's going to be happening in September and we're, we are very concerned that we will be sticking to the, the government guidance and we will be prioritising the safety of all of our staff and all of our students. So therefore, um, we are going to continue to follow and review the government guidelines so that we are up to date with, with the latest um, guidelines and the, the latest procedures. Um, a lot of work has been going on in the college over the summer um, or, or during lockdown to make sure that um, we can cater for students if they can come back in September um, and we have contingency plans in place if we cannot start straight away in September. So um, we're very keen to make sure that access students experience is going to be um, as positive as possible regardless of what the, the COVID-19 situation is. Okay, so thank you all for listening. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just quickly cover a little bit about the, um, the individual pathways. So I'm just going to share this other document. So nursing and healthcare professions then, as well as the, um, the core modules, they do all of these subject specific modules. Okay, so these are all designed to help them develop subject specific skills and knowledge for degrees like uh, nursing, midwifery, occupational therapy, and operating department practitioner. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave it to Heather and Tony, our science boss, to talk about the um, medical and combined sciences pathways and answer any questions about the science modules for the nursing and healthcare professions. Hi guys, my name's Heather. I am one of the science uh, teachers for the combined and medical sciences. Um, I'm just going to start with combined science. Um, that is probably our most varied um, course in terms of 
the you know different types of degrees you can go on to. I mean, you can go from anything from ecology to nutrition or dietetics, I think it's called now, uh, biomedical science, um, pharmacy, anything like that. It's quite a wide ranging course. So you can see from what Pam's put up, we do do some chemistry. So we have about, uh, we have about three courses that are chemistry based. The rest are mainly sort of either biology based. There's one little statistics uh, course that's there that's an introduction to statistics. That's there mainly to help you. So when you get to university, if you do have to do any analysis, then you have those skills already there to break down data and break down some numbers. Um, there's also the option of doing uh, evolution and ecology, if you fancy doing that, if you want to go on and do zoology or conservation, or you can do disease and body defence if you're more interested in more of the biological sciences. Um, at the end of it, someone already asked, I think one asked if you do a 5,000, well, just if you do a 5,000 word project, um, and all pathways do that, and that's towards the end of the course. And that is an, into something that you're, um, interested in but obviously related to your course so for example if you're doing combined science you do something science you couldn't go on and go and do the history of ballet or something like that no matter how interesting it is you know you need to do something related but it's not massively restrictive it means something that you're particularly interested in um, in terms of the actual units and the structure um, we teach all these units um, but side by side so you'll be doing several units at the same time the types of assessment are ongoing so you're assessed about every nine weeks as Pam said and the types of assessment are different so it might be an essay it might be a presentation it might be a case study it could be a leaflet something like that um, I think that's it Tony did you want to come in and talk about the medical sciences if you're there here comes Hello. Um, hi everyone. Uh, medical sciences is predominantly for people going through into the vocational degree pathways of things like physiotherapy, podiatry and paramedic science. So want people wanted to join the NHS and start their training and it's um, a very popular route and very successful route so far. Um, it's as you see by the, the units that you do, it's kind of very human biology orientated so um, investigation skills which is very sciencey uh, and that will develop your academic skills which are essential for embarking on a science degree which these um, this pathway goes towards uh, diseases and body defenses uh, musculoskeletal uh, reproduction as you can see uh, things like cardiopulmonary and energy all those things are basically human biology so they're broken down into particular units. Um, but there's also psychology, mental health, which is becoming an increasingly more important part of the NHS approach to treating people, regardless of um, you know, what their actual other treatment, medical treatment is, it's becoming a more important issue. And of course, at the end, you will be doing your extended independent academic study, which you will choose the topic with guidance and do a kind of dissertation type project um, which be scientifically orientated so it would be a requirement of all the academic skills of research academic writing presentation of data um, developing an argument and drawing a conclusion uh, all wrapped up into one project and it's quite high stakes in terms of the credits you get but it's at the end of uh, the year, so you'd be finishing it, it's the last thing you finish. Um, you get quite a lot of support, you get your own tutor dedicated to support you in that project. And you, you basically show off what you've learned all year. Um, so it does finish with quite a significant piece of work, which probably will be the biggest piece of work you've done to date and will put you in very good stead for the type of tasks that will be given to you in your degree. Um, it will put you, in terms of the first year of the degree course, it will be, you'll be uh, ahead of the game because a lot of BTEC students and A-level students will not have this comprehensive coverage. 
um, and it, it will you will remember what you learned very much in the latter part of the course where it's a three or four year course but when you finish the course these are the, the things that you remember most i think um so any more questions then please at the end of the session please ask thank you okay thanks tony and heather sorry um okay so the other three pathways then are um so business and law so this is obviously designed for people who want to go into sort of business management or business combined with law degree courses so these are the um part the units that this pathway um incorporates um and as you can see there's there's a fairly even split between business pathways and law pathways um there is a quite a practical um, unit called project event management where students actually get involved in organizing and planning an event. Um, and that's really, really useful for um, getting experience or developing your experience in all of those really important skills that are involved in planning and running an event. Okay, so obviously they do a project as well. Every, every pathway involves a, an extended independent academic study project they're just different um, subjects our humanities combined with social sciences pathway is a bit of a mixed bag so it's quite diverse in terms of it, what it's designed for in terms of progression um, and accordingly it has quite a diverse range of modules and um, typically our graduates from this pathway go on to do degrees like history English psychology sociology uh, social work, uh, media studies, but the list is just so long I couldn't I couldn't possibly um, tell you all of them. Um, and last but not least is our teacher education pathway. Now this one is designed specifically for students who want to progress onto primary education degree courses. Okay, um, and for that reason there are some very important education based modules in this pathway. Um, but there's also some other things that are relevant to education. So things like sociology in relation to education, um, psychology um, in relation to maybe how people learn. Um, there's literature, which is important for you know, developing skills of analysis and also for um, being able to teach English skills. Um, also anti-discriminatory practice, which is important for you know, not only teachers, but any profession. Um, and again, we have the extended independent academic study. Okay, so um, I think in terms of the information that we can give you at the moment, that's pretty much it. Um, we've tried to pack as much as we can into this session, um, but we're very happy to answer any questions that you have about any of the pathways or any aspect of the access course. So um, yeah, please do ask us if you need to. Okay, so I've just actually found the questions, so I shall address those now. So I have a question, do we need two dissertations for the course? Um, so the, the, the independent project that we spoke about is very much like a mini dissertation. And as Tony said, you will do that sort of in the latter stages of the course, but you don't need to have done a dissertation before you do the course. I'm not sure if that's what the question was. Right, um, so I hope that answers that question. Uh, if we slightly miss out on our GCSEs, we need, can we still enrol or do we need to do a Maths English course at the same time? Right, so you can do one GCSE alongside the access course. Um, we certainly wouldn't, uh, wouldn't permit students to do more than one because the workload is, is very heavy. Um, the other option is that a lot of universities now are doing equivalency tests in maths, English and science. 
um, and if you if you do these with the university and you get the score that they require, they will accept that as an equivalent. And I've just realised that Heather's already asked the asked the answer. I these have, questions. I have, but Lord just pointed out that I was only putting uh, my answers to the panelists who already know this, so it wasn't very helpful. So I do apologise. No, I was no, trying to answer them, and it went to the panelists and not the uh, attendees. Okay, so. Um, are we reading these out then, these answers? Yep, can do. Do you want me okay. to? Okay. Right. Um, okay, so Danielle said, Hi Lawrence, thank you for getting back to me and letting me know about functional skills. The thing with functional skills, for us, it's fine. You know, we'll take students on a case-by-case -case basis. You don't have to have GCSE, Maths and English. Um, but it very much depends on what the university want. If they want, if they will accept functional skills, absolutely fine. If they want GCSE, uh, Maths and English, it could be a little bit more tricky for you to get into the university. But again, as Pam said, some of the universities are now doing these equivalency tests. So that's always something worth um, looking up if you are going to go to university. If you're, uh, sorry, if you're looking on the university website, have a look, see if they do the equivalency tests. Um, any more? How would I? Oh, sorry. Sorry, carry on. How? What sort of thing do I need for the interview? Um, you need to complete a, a personal statement as part of the application process. Um, and you'll be sent out a guidance document which uh, give you, gives you some pointers in terms of what you need to include in that. Um, so really that's the only thing you need to, to have completed before the interview. And then obviously at the interview you'll, you'll be asked uh, questions, a variety of questions. There's another sorry, one that's got, um, sorry, it's another one that says what the planned start date. So our start date is the week beginning 7th of September. Um, we are hoping to have an induction week, uh, the week before that. Um, and that's just so students can get, you know, log on, make sure they can find the college uh, resources, get the lanyard and library card and, you know, everything else you could possibly sort of need. So that gets that bit done before we actually get onto the teaching. So I've just seen another question from Gabrielle. How many hours a week will I be in college as a guide? Um, so as a guide, you will be in three days a week, which adds up to a total of 13.5 hours in college. Um, there will also be work that will, be need to, will need to be completed outside of college. And as, a, as a, a general guideline, I would say it will be roughly the same amount of hours that you would spend in college. Ah, Danielle, so you've said that Brighton University said they accept functional skills, that is excellent news. Um, so if that's what you want to do, um, I would, if you're doing both English and maths, I would suggest doing them before the access course if possible, because it is quite intense. You could possibly do one of them alongside the access course, but I wouldn't really advise doing both, just because of the intensity of trying to do all that work. Okay, oh, we need to wrap up. Yeah. I think I've just spotted another question. Uh, how would I go about doing the access preparation course? Um, so if you're talking about pre-access, that's not running before the access course this year. Um, however, if you want to do some preparation, you could look at some study skills stuff. Um, if you're particularly interested in sociology, you could do some reading about that. Right, any other questions? Okay, have we answered them all? I think we have. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure we've answered them. Hopefully. Them. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks, Lawrence. Right, uh, thank you, everybody. Um, uh, thanks for all your questions, and we hope that's been helpful in terms of giving you the information you need. Um, and we look forward to receiving your applications. Yeah.